Welcome to the 2017 National Healthcare Safety Network, or NHSN Quick Learn Series. These CDC presentations are an educational resource for facilities working to prevent healthcare associated infections, or HAIs. This session will review basic statistics for NHSN analysis. In this program, we will introduce fundamental principles of statistical testing, including the p-value and confidence intervals, and discuss their application to the standardized infection ratio, or SIR. We will also review the difference between statistical and practical significance, and how to use this knowledge to translate analysis into prevention. This presentation assumes you have a basic understanding of the SIR and its calculation. Statistical testing in NHSN is used to determine if there is a significant difference between two values. To put this into context, we would use the results of statistical testing to answer questions such as, has our SIR changed over time? Or, is our hospital's SIR significantly different from the national baseline? Remember that an SIR of 1.0 represents the national baseline. If there is a statistically significant difference between two values, then the difference between those values was likely not caused by random chance. Let's walk through an example. Our hospital performed 50 colon procedures in the first quarter of 2016. There were four surgical site infections identified, and NHSN predicted 3.2 SSIs during that time period. We can calculate our SIR as 4 divided by 3.2, which results in 1.25. The hospital wants to know whether that SIR of 1.25 is significantly different than the national baseline of 1. We measure statistical significance using p-values, which tell us about the rarity of the data. In our earlier example, a p-value would give us the probability that our SIR of 1.25 happened by random chance alone. NHSN uses the conventional cut point of 5% to determine rarity. That is, if the p-value is less than or equal to 0.05, or 5%, we conclude that our SIR was not the result of random chance, and therefore it is significantly different than the national baseline of 1. If the p-value is greater than 0.05, there is a higher likelihood that the SIR was a result of random chance and that it's not statistically different than the national baseline. Within NHSN's SIR reports, you will see that the p-value is already calculated for you so that you can easily interpret whether your SIR is significantly different than the national baseline. However, you may also perform this calculation on your own using either the NHSN Statistics Calculator or the SAS Macro, available at the end of this presentation. In the previous example, our facility had a colon SSI SIR of 1.25. After reviewing the NHSN SIR report, we determined that the p-value was 0.6169. This p-value is above 0.05, and therefore we conclude that our facility's SSI-SIR was not significantly different than the national baseline. Another statistical measure that's commonly used is the 95% confidence interval. This interval is a measurement of statistical precision and is interpreted together with the p-value. We use this interval as a way to address the idea that a hospital's SIR is a measurement and that this measurement is different from an unknowable, absolute truth. For example, our hospital's SSI SIR for 2016 Q1 was 1.25. Hypothetically, if our hospital repeated SSI surveillance for the entire quarter, would you expect the SIR to be exactly the same? Probably not. 
In reality, we know that HAI surveillance is never repeated for any time period. But statistics allow us to consider the possibility that different results may have been seen if our hospital conducted the same surveillance multiple times. Because we can never know the absolute true performance of our facility, we must account for the potential variability in SIR values. Let's look at an example. Our hospital's SSI-SIR was 1.25. After reviewing the NHSN SIR report, we noted that the 95% confidence interval ranges from 0.397 to 3.015. Because this interval includes the value of 1, we conclude that our SIR is not significantly different than 1. If the 95% interval did not contain the value of 1, we would conclude that the SIR was significantly different than 1. The interpretation of the 95% confidence interval almost always agrees with the interpretation of the p-value. The 95% confidence interval also provides us with a measure of precision. A wide confidence interval indicates that there is lower precision in the SIR, meaning that the volume of data from the facility used to calculate the SIR, such as the number of procedures, was low. This table provides examples of SIR values and their 95% confidence intervals. Using the 95% confidence interval, we determine whether or not each SIR is statistically significant. In addition, we look at the width of the interval to determine whether or not the SIR is precise. Another way to view the SIR data is via a line graph. Take a look at this example. Six facilities are identified with letters A through F. The dotted blue vertical line represents the national baseline of 1.0. Facilities A and B have non-significant SIRs as their confidence intervals cross the dotted line. Their SIRs are not significantly different from the national baseline. Facilities C and D have statistically significant SIRs. This is because the entire confidence interval does not cross the dotted line. Their SIRs are significantly lower than the national baseline. Facilities E and F also have statistically significant SIRs that are higher or worse than the national baseline. Statistical testing, although very useful, may not paint a complete picture of your facility's performance. As we mentioned before, statistical values such as the 95% confidence interval are highly influenced by sample size or exposure volume. A facility that performs 1,000 procedures a month may find an SIR of 1.05 significant, whereas a facility that only performs 10 procedures a month may find the same SIR value to be not significant. This is called statistical power. The ability of the statistical test to detect significant differences. Often, facilities with low exposure volume may never obtain a statistically significant SIR. Even if the SIR is not statistically significant, there may still be opportunity for infection prevention. We recommend using a combination of statistical and practical significance to make infection prevention decisions. In the previous example, Facility A had an SIR of 2.43. Because it's greater than 1, it means that the number of observed infections is higher than the number of predicted infections, even though this SIR is not significantly different from the national baseline, there is still an excess number of observed infections and prevention activities may be needed. Another way to examine practical significance is to look at your SIRs over time. Instead of comparing your SIRs to 1, you can use the NHSN Statistics Calculator tool to statistically compare your current SIR to a past SIR. You can also look at your SIR values qualitatively over time. 
This may help identify glaring increases or decreases in your HAI incidence. If you do perform this comparison over time, it is very important that both SIRs in your comparison were calculated under the same national baseline. A 2015 SIR calculated using the updated 2015 national baseline cannot be compared to an SIR that was calculated on the original national baseline. This slide provides links to helpful resources, such as instructions for using the NHSN Statistics Calculator, as well as the location of SAS macros and SIR rebaseline information. This concludes the NHSN Quick Learn on Basic Statistics for NHSN Analysis. For additional questions, please contact NHSN User Support at nhsn at cdc.gov.